Hey family, welcome back. My name is Effie. Today we are going to have a very detailed box braiding class. So if you box braid like this or even anywhere close to this, today I will teach you how to braid like this. How to get all of your box braids to look equal, the same size. How to get them to look neat, like twins, literally like twins. So this video is going to be the best 33 minutes of your braiding life because I'm going to cover a lot from spacing to how to get the perfect size for the box braids and the natural hair to gripping the roots to getting them neat to getting them smooth and much more. I will demonstrate to you on a mannequin as well as on a person so that you can tell the difference and you can understand the difference. Okay, so this video is super long. Make sure you have all your materials ready and also take breaks like when the ads play, go use the bathroom, go grab a snack and let's get into this video. So I'm going to teach you the split and fill technique. This technique is going to allow you to get any size of box braids or even twist whatever hair you want to do. So the hair I'm using is pre-stretched braiding hair as you can see and the split and fill technique is similar to a cell division. This is a human cell, okay, the human body, okay, I know we're not in biology class but you see how it's splitting into two? As it's dividing itself, it's multiplying, okay? So that's how we're going to, we're going to apply the same effect to the braiding hair. So for extra large size, alright, I'm using one of the pre-stretched hair. And I'm going to fill it with my hand to feel the thickness of the braiding hair okay and why am I feeling the braiding hair is so that I can remember how, how thick the hair is and then I'm going to split the hair into two and as I split I'm going to fill one half of it and then I'm going to fill the other half of it and if one half is thicker than the other I will simply just take hair from one of the other to make sure that both are equal okay so this is for extra large size of braid I would use this amount of hair for extra large size of braid so for large size I will simply repeat what I did to split each of the hair into two sections okay until I get four sections and I would use this amount of hair for large size box braids okay I will fill it with my hand make sure that both are equal until I get four splits so for between medium and large I will basically repeat the same thing and split the hair each of this piece of hair that I previously did I would split them into two again until I have eight pieces of hair so you basically want to keep doing this until you know you get this size of braiding hair that you want So this is what I consider my medium. Everybody's medium and small is different. Yours could be, this could be your small, but my medium is 16 splits, okay? And if I'm gonna do small, I will split it into two again until I get double the amount of hair. That would be my small, okay? But I'm doing medium um, size today, so we're only gonna use 16 splits. So in this session, we are still going to use the 16 splits of the medium size braiding hair. And I want to show you how the parts of natural hair, basically the size of natural hair you use, I want to show you how it can influence the size of the braid. Okay? So I will show you both knotless and I will show you the traditional box braids. 
So on the left side, I will show you the knot lace and on the right side, I will show you the traditional. I'm really doing this because I want you to um, understand how the size of the natural hair is basically um, what determines the spacing of the braid and the fullness of the braid. So we're going to start with small parts. I want to show you how small, small parts of natural hair can make the braids um, fuller, okay? So we're going to do small parts and then we're going to do medium parts and then we're going to do large parts. So just keep watching. So now I'm parting the hair small. I'm going to split that whole line as you see, I'm going to split it into four. So I'm parting the hair really, really small and I'm going to fit in four box braids into that line as you see it. Okay. So I'm crossing over the braiding here now, making sure I'm filling it and all the hair is equal. Don't worry, I will break this down towards the end of the video. I'm going to break it down, show you the knotting technique and the braiding technique, everything. So just watch me. Let's focus on the size first and then we can move on. So just keep braiding, braiding. Braiding, braiding all the way to the end. And now we have four braids in this line. As you can see, all the braids are packed together. There is basically no space. And that's how, like, if you want to get the braids full, you do, like, small parts, like so, like this picture. All right, let's move on. So now we're going to do medium parts and we're going to use our medium size braiding hair. Okay. So if you notice the, the parts above the one I just did is thicker. So I basically just added a little bit more hair, basically like double the size of the first line of box braid I just did. So you see the thickness of the braiding hair? I'm going to split the natural hair into two to get that same thickness. So I'm pretty sure you noticed the difference that the medium size natural hair to medium size braiding hair is a little bit thicker than the braids we did before. And this um, medium size natural hair to medium size braiding hair is basically going to give you um, this fullness in this picture. Okay, so let's do large. And I'm going to show you why I do not recommend using large size of, um, of natural hair to like a medium size of braiding hair or a small size of braiding hair for traditional box braids. Okay, I'm going to show you why I don't recommend it. Because one thing with traditional box braids is you are basically using the braiding hair to hold the base together. Unlike knotless braids where you feed in the hair, we'll come to that, but let's, let's finish this first. You're basically using the braiding hair to hold the base. 
So if you use a large size of hair with like a small large size of natural hair with like a small size of braiding hair, it's gonna look stiff. You see how it looks stiff? And the braid is not falling flat. It's because there's too much hair at the base. All right, let's compare. So braids with small size natural hair falls flat. Braids with medium size natural hair falls flat. Large stands stiff. And large is gonna give you scanty braids like this. If you want it. <laughs> okay, we are done with traditional box braids. Now let's do knotless box braids with the same medium hair. This time I'm gonna split one of the medium hair into four pieces. First, you could start by splitting it into two two pieces and then you split each of the two pieces that you, you did you split it again until you have four pieces like so so for knotless braids you have to basically feed in the hair as you braid so that's why we're making sure we have small pieces of hair to feed in so I'm going to use the same size of natural hair that I use for traditional box braids. I'm going to use the same for knotless box braids. I want to show you something very interesting between these two box braids, okay? You see how we had an issue with the traditional box braids that is large and how it was stiff? I'm going to show you what could possibly go wrong on the knotless box braids spectrum. So keep watching me. So for knotless, usually you split the hair into three. Since the hair is small, I could literally just start braiding it and split it as I go, like as I braid. But for the sake of teaching you, I'm just going to split this into three sections. I know you're probably like, oh, it's so thin. Yeah, I know it's thin. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because I want to show you something so I usually feed in the hair over like so I feed in the hair over I let go I braid and I tuck under feed in the hair over let go braid and tuck under and my hand is positioned like I am doing cornrows this is how I like to do knotless box braids and I will explain why As you keep on watching okay so I'm done with all four of the knotless braids and you see how the base is so thin this right here is not healthy for the natural hair so even though all the braids are equal the base is not healthy because it could cause pulling of the natural hair and could cause a damage to the roots of the natural hair so I don't recommend this. So now let's do medium size natural hair parts. And I'm going to explain why I position my hand like I'm doing Conroe. So I'm splitting the hair into three. Making sure it's all equal, three parts. Making sure I have my four pieces of braiding here. And then this is my overhand method, basically positioning my hand like I'm doing con roll. I do this so that the base is secure and so that the, the roots of the knotless does not get old fast. Now, some people do underhand method by doing their hand like this and then they feed in the hair under like so. They keep taking the hair and they feed it under like so. I don't like to do knotless braid like this because it does not give me enough control over the base. Because with knotless braids, you're starting with your natural hair, and I want it to last long, so that's why I position my hand like I'm doing corn roll. So I braid about four times, and then I start feeding in the hair. I place the hair over, I let go, and tuck under. 
place the hair over, let go, tuck under. Okay? So I have control over the base and the base is nice and firm. And the hair is not like, um, it's not looking bent or anything. So that's it for medium. And this is healthy for the natural hair because it's equal amount of natural hair to equal amount of braiding hair. So although it's the same size of box braids with the small size natural hair braids we did before, but this is actually much healthier. Moving on, now let's do large size natural hair parts for the knotless braids. I'm gonna just repeat the same thing I did previously, so just keep on watching. So if you notice the braid is actually flat compared to traditional even if we use more hair so it's gonna stay flat not full but it's gonna stay flat so so in summary for traditional box braids less hair of the natural hair with the medium braiding hair is fine it works perfectly fine Equal hair of the natural hair with the medium size braiding hair is fine But large size of the natural hair with medium braiding hair does not work Because it makes the braid Stiff and it makes the braid just hang instead of laying flat like the other two section of braids right here the density of the hair is not good for the braiding hair, if you're doing um, traditional box braids, the density of the braiding hair has to be either smaller than the size of the braiding hair or equal to the size of the braiding hair. It should not be more than the size of the braiding hair, otherwise your traditional box braids is going to look like this. So that's for traditional. Now with knotless braids, um less natural hair with medium size or braiding hair it's going to cause too much tension to the natural hair because the size of the natural hair is too thin so this is going to cause pulling on the natural hair over time so if you're going to do this size of natural hair you need to use like the smaller size of braiding hair so smaller size of natural hair to small size of braiding hair is what would work for this roll of braids okay so what i did right now showing you i do not recommend doing small size natural hair to medium size braiding hair if you're going to do small size natural hair you need to use small size braiding hair to avoid pulling of the natural hair now for medium knotless medium size natural hair for with medium size braiding hair works because the density of the hair and the density of the braiding hair matches this is not going to cause any type of pulling on your natural hair okay so this works perfectly fine and also um bigger size of natural hair with medium size of braiding hair also works as well because it is not less braids as you are feeding in the hair it's going to make the hair um progress in a flatter way compared to you doing this size of natural hair on a traditional back braids okay so because i am feeding in the hair it progresses the size of the natural hair progresses with the braiding hair as i continue to feed in and feed in and feed in so this will allow the 
large size of natural hair to be um, to blend with the medium size of braiding hair so for knotless braids more um, natural hair is fine but I would not recommend going over this size if you're going this size of natural hair if you're going to use medium um, braiding hair so this size is fine anything more than this may start to make the knotless braids look like this and it may start to make it look hanging okay so this size is perfect for medium knotless braids so knotless braids more hair like this is fine compared to traditional box braids but don't go over more than this so i hope this is clear for you guys so um out of all the sizes what i really recommend that what i use as a standard for my box braids is basically medium size um i'm sorry it's basically equal size of natural hair to equal size of braiding hair this is what i use every time i do box braids so that i don't have to worry about the hair not staying flat or any of that okay or the hair pulling or any of that so i just make sure i use equal size of natural hair to equal size of braiding hair and i'm going to show you this in the next session of this video using a model so I hope this is clear for you guys and just keep on watching. So let's do equal size of natural hair to the equal size of braiding hair on my model. So I'm going to use the rat tail comb to part across and then I'm going to use the other comb to part in between. So I'm going to make sure that the size of her natural hair is the same size as the braiding hair, which is medium, okay? So I'm basically splitting the hair into two. And I'm just going to gauge, just looking at it, by looking at it, right, I could see that you know the braiding hair and the natural hair is equal you can also fill the hair the sizes and make sure that the natural hair is basically it feels you know equal the more you do this the more you're going to strengthen your muscle memory and your visual memory <laughs> okay so i'm i just crossed over the braiding hair make sure that they are all the same size and now i am going to pre-knot the braiding hair make sure you feel it make sure it's all equal if it's not then you could take some hair out or add some hair from the one that is thicker just make sure it's all equal so this is the pre-knotting the pre-knotting technique you flip the hair and you make a knot so one strand of the hair is sitting on top of my index finger again hold the hair and you just flip it like so that's the first step and then the second step is to basically hold the natural hair I'm actually right-handed so um, if you're left-handed you're going to do that pre knot on your left hand and you're going to hold the hair with your right hand but since i'm right-handed this is how i'm doing it and the next step is to place the hair on her natural hair and let go of my left hand like so and you see the extra hanging piece i'm going to hold it with my thumb and index finger and then i'm going to use my middle finger like so to hold the knot and then I'm going to separate the hair with my index finger like so all the way to the right side so basically I split her natural hair into two with the braiding hair and then I braid over to the left side and then I'm gonna put my middle finger on the knot again and braid over to the right side Braid over to the left side, braid over to the right side, and then flip the braid like so. 
try not to braid her hair tight because we're usually like very sensitive on the, the neck area so for tucking all I basically do is to make sure I put her natural hair underneath the braiding hair like so and I use the shining jam and my grease like so and I just braid all the way to the ends and I'm gonna twist the ends when I get to the end so just keep on watching Alright, let's do this again. I'm really taking my time to explain this finger technique because some of you still don't understand how to do it and I promise to basically explain it again and show it again. That's why I'm taking my time to do this. So after you split the hair, I'm sorry, after you cross over the hair and make sure all three strands are equal, okay? The next step is to pre-knot and just hold the braiding here like I'm holding it. So hold the braiding here like so and flip it over. Make sure that one of the strand is, you know, on top of your index finger. And the next step is to hold the natural hair. And then I'm going to attach the braiding hair to a hair and let go of my left hand. And then I'm going to take the extra piece and place my middle finger on the knot and separate the hair with my index finger going towards the right side. And I braid over to the left side. And then braid over to the right side. Braid over to the left side. Braid over to the right side. Flip the braid. And now I'm going to tuck her natural hair under. Just basically putting it underneath the braiding hair. Like so. So I skipped placing my middle finger on the knot because I'm used to doing this. Um, you can place your middle finger on the knot twice or even up to three times to secure the knot in place until you get used to it. So usually I do it one time and that's it. Just for the sake of this tutorial, that's why I showed you guys doing it twice the first time. And I just continue to braid, 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 braid and tuck her, uh, her natural hair in. And I want to show you guys something too, okay, that I taught in um, the first box braid perfecting tutorial is to get your box braids to look you know flat and just smooth okay to make it smooth and you know flat like so you basically want to step away from the braid let me show you do not lean forward like this if you lean forward like this you are in a compressing position so lean back when you lean back, you are in an elongating position. <laughs> and then the braid is basically going to follow your body. Your hand is going to move towards your body. And this is going to allow the back braid to be flat and smooth. Okay, so that there is no lumps and no bumps. And it's also going to help you with your speed as well. When you are in an elongating position, your hands, your fingers are going to move fast and the braid is basically going to try to catch up with your body. And that's how to get it to look flat. So I braid all the way until I reach the ends and then I'm twisting the ends basically to make it nice and neat. And that's it. So that's it for the traditional box braids. You can see all of them look equal. So using 
the braiding hair splitting technique that I showed you guys will have all the braids to look equal like this. They all look like twins. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the knotless again on the other side. I pretty much explained it with the mannequin. So you guys just watch me and let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. Okay, so I'm going to do the knotless. The same thing, medium size equal natural hair to medium size braiding hair. So just keep on watching. So that's it you guys if you follow everything that I showed you in this class your back spread is going to look like this they are all going to be the same size it's going to look smooth it's going to look neat and I hope you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys next time